And we are in the first dungeon of the game. As you can guess, this is actually a fire-based dungeon. It is not a forest-based one, unlike the very first dungeons of every other Zelda game. Which is kind of different. I was surprised when I found out the first dungeon was actually a fire-based one instead of a forest-based one. I don't know exactly why Nintendo would have that decision. Oh, I think still alive. Oh wow, he actually got up here. Actually, did not expect that. As far as dungeons go in Zelda series, this is probably the worst one out of them. I really expected a bit more. I always love the fire dungeons of the Zelda games, but this one is kind of meh. Then again, the first dungeons of the Zelda games are always okay. So I think this is a good time to go over what the Tingle Tuner does. Now, in the dungeons, when you have the Tingle Tuner out, Tingle usually comment on things like when you're going through here, he'll comment that Melly went through here and other stuff like that. Now. You see that boulder over there? I do not think Tingle will actually blow it up. Even though that's not actually going to help you out in the slightest. So, as I've explained before, there is a Tingle Bomb, and there's also a Tingle Balloon. The Tingle Balloon basically works like the hover boots from Ocarina of Time. And that you can basically go, you can basically walk on air for a few seconds. It can be very helpful. Well, sometimes. But, like with the Tingle Bomb, I don't think Tingle will let you use it. Like, that um, broken bridge on the island, I don't think he'll let you use it there. Um, his other ones. Uh, he has a Tingle Shield, which works like Nerus Love. And those platforms also do not stay up for long. But anyway, the Tingle Shoot, it's basically Nerus Love. It worked. It only lasts for 10 seconds, but. But, it but you're invincible. Like, it, you, whatever will still knock you back will still knock you back, but you won't take damage. I don't know why, but. Whatever. His other ones are... Another one of his is Kalulimpa, the thing he always says. Which has a random effect. It can grant you anything. It could do nothing. Tingle could tell you your fortune, or it could give you one of the flavors of Ting. Or it could give you the Tingle Balloon and the Tingle Shoot at the same time. But the Tingle Balloon only lasts for 5 seconds, but if you get it via the Kalimpa, you get it for 10 seconds, which is awesome. I believe the cool, the Tingle Shoot only lasts for 10 seconds. Now, another now other stuff he has is our Ting. Ting comes in 3 flavors. Red, green, and blue. Red, as you can guess, fills up your life energy, and green fulfills your magic meter. And yeah, just sport magic. But we're gonna get that relatively soon, I guess. And then blue, as you can also guess, will heal all of them. We'll give you both. Which is great. So those things are basically chews. And I believe they debuted in Majora's Mask under the name of Chu. I don't know why they changed the name, but okay. I don't get why you can't leave rooms with a weapon in hand. Doesn't even make sense. He just like drops for some reason. Yeah. 
No, the heart is falling. Don't leave me, little heart. I think you can use a tingle bomb on those bombs there. Maybe position it right, I'm not sure. And my wallet's now full. That kind of sucks. Oh! Oh, wow. You can actually destroy enemies with... Wow, you can actually destroy enemies with rocks. I did not know that. I wanted to just see if you could. I didn't think you could actually... You actually could. Well, that party did not work. Oh, there it went. You know, something else I like about this game is, uh, in combat, you get you can get some little cues whenever you hit. Like, like if you don't have out your sword you hear a slow-paced uh, track. Then when you take it out, it intensifies. When you get hits off, you get a little dynamic cue. You get a spin attack or a jump attack or a parry, you get another cue. And you also get one when you kill an enemy. Like, you just heard one there. Whoa, he stuffed, he fell. Yeah, I always liked that. I thought it was a very nice touch to this game. And for some reason, the lava cannot destroy the wooden ladder. Did I mention it's made out of wood? Yeah. What was that weird sound I was making at? Damn it! Freaking fell over the edge. Oh, oh, move. Luckily, those things take a long time to... Well, ignite. Erupt, I mean. Why'd I say ignite? I believe there is a hole on the other side that you can crawl into. And there in the hole it goes through will lead back out here and there. But for some reason you can't climb into it. I don't know why. If it was Ocarina of Time you probably could. But oh well. There are rubies in that hole, but I have a full wallet, so I have no reason to go in there. Oh, a potion. I'll... I'll take the red one. I found they only sold on bait and the hoi pair. But you actually should not buy the bait and the hoi pair. The hoi pair is like, I think, 30 or 50 rupees. Alright, let's check. Okay, it's 30. I'm just buying the bait so I can get rid of my wallet.
You know, I don't get it. Why are we buying stuff off them? Like, shouldn't they be grateful? What the hell do you want, Tetra? Shouldn't it be- Hey! That's not Tetra. It does- You're not even talking like Tetra. I think that was the King of Red Line. I don't know how he got one, or how he figured we had one, but okay. Oh, by the way, um, that thing is called the Pirate's Charm. And apparently, now the King of Red Lion has one. Red Lions has one. I don't know how he actually got one. But we haven't heard from Tetra in a long time. Since... Uh, since she told us uh, about the searchlights. And we now have the compass and the map, so... We're pretty good. Might as well actually show off the dungeon. We have four floors. We always have explored the first floor, actually, entirely. As you can see, the boss, we're just one floor away. The fourth floor doesn't really have much to it. There's a quite a bit of treasure we can find. There's one in this room that we need to progress. Okay, I don't know why I rolled into the wall, but I don't get it. Why are they charging more than Beetle is? Yep. Yep. I also believe that at this point in the game, that's the only way you can get blue potions, but since we don't have magic, you have you should wait until you get magic. Okay, that's weird. And I thought we actually fell off for a second. Hey. Come over here. Nice. It fell right on me, that's awesome. I was worried for a second that I was gonna fall off the ledge. The wing girls thing, I believe, is a reference. I believe is referring to the R Rito. Or Rito, however you pronounce the name. That's a side quest for a later part. We can't quite do it yet, like, we don't have all the necessary wings to do it. And I'm pretty sure in here is a joy pendant. Oh yeah, well, that reminds me of something. Um, uh, when we were outside before, uh, Electronic Games Monthly, uh, they did an April Fool's joke, where, damn that, where they offered to give people a remake of Wind Waker in Try Princess graphics. So it basically had a shot of that. Of that, um, area, Link fighting the bird. And then they did something like that. They showed Link from Trial Princess fighting a bird, and then they said that you'll get the game. A remake in those graphics. What was interesting, though, is that Link had magic meat, a magic meter, in the screenshot. And there's... And there's no magic in Trial Princess. It got uh, quite a bit of outrage for some people. I think, I'm not sure. But it's interesting, because people think that Midna was actually going to be a source of magic, using that um, spin attack she has. I don't really know much else on this. But that pot over there is something that is not in any of the Zelda game. It acts as a teleportation. Like, there's one pot at the beginning, one pot at what is the midpoint, which means we are halfway through the dungeon. And then there is one right near the boss. It's a very useful feature. I, Twilight Princess did something similar to it. Um, that little bird thing that you encounter in some of the dungeons, and that is a member of the uh, City of the Sky people. I, I think she acts like it. I don't remember her name, but she's basically the closest the game has to... Uh, to the pot system. 
It's really useful though, because if you have to stop or something, you can basically resume like the rest of the dungeon with much greater ease. Like you have to like go all the way to the beginning and then make your way back up a few floors. It's really nice. But it's even better in Twilight Princess because you can use it in any room and then you'll return to that very room. I think it returns to your exact same position, but I'm not sure. It really is a great decision on Nintendo's part. They added in some really nice mechanics to Twilight Princess. Either they added mechanics or they refined some. Still kind of a shame they cut some things out. I'm wondering what else they would have done with the magic meter, though. And I'm also wondering why Electronic Gaming Monthly did that April Fool's joke. And I really wish we could skip this, but of course we can't. Yep. I don't know yep. why we can't. I really, I really don't understand it. Why, Nintendo? You are tearing me apart. Joy pendant, nice. That was weird. Uh, did anyone see that? That was we odd. Uh, somebody has a tingle tuner does. Tingle, as you can guess, acts like Navi and Tattle. Oh, God. Okay, so Tingle also offers hit on enemies, which is pretty useful. He gives them the, na the official names, but he actually does not help with bosses. He will, in fact, refuse to help. He'll make up a BS excuse. Like, at one point, he'll actually say he's too embarrassed. Other time, he'll say that the frequency is getting too low and he can't actually help you. Or communicate with you any longer. I don't know why Nintendo is doing that and why I can't actually kill this. Why I can't get that thing to curl into a ball. Okay. This room can be kind of a pain to deal with. And also, we some else the Tingle Tuner is Tingle can uncover hidden rupees like on this ledge. Duh. On that little platform, if you use a Tingle Bomb there, it will uncover a rupee, I believe. The reaction command is kind of cool, though. I mean, Pari, not reaction command. This is not Kingdom Hearts 2. And for the record, I'm actually probably never going to LP any Square Enix game, because I personally do not like their games. Why am I having such a such a hard time with this room? Why? Why am I having such a hard time? Wow. Everything just fell into lava. Why did it all fall into lava? I never have a hard time this room. Why did I have our time? And I believe we are now on the fourth floor. No, we're on the third floor. So, right there is the boss room. But, not only do we not have the big key, but we also cannot get over there. Again, I believe that the Tingle Balloon would not work, that he'll just refuse to. Yeah. 
So we got that power over there, which can make things much easier. I think this is the only boss where you'll find the pod to it before you actually have access to that boss. Not sure. Above the clouds. That's crazy. 